for this video I have a piece of organic sedimentary rock which is coal as you can see my hands are getting all black and this is a property of good quality coal before we go into much detail let me give you some context so coal forms from the accumulation and preservation of plant materials usually in a swamp environment meaning a forest wetland it is an ideal geological condition that is the combination of plant materials and water all mixed up nicely and facing the perfect amount of pressure heat for millions of years and that's when we get a coal like this now basically there are five types of coal and they are peat lignite subbituminous bituminous and anthracite let me show you all these stages through an illustration the first stage consists of the peat which contains decomposed plant debris like leaves fern branches roots etc a good picture of peat would be like this this material is on its way to becoming coal but its plant debris sources is still easily recognizable. The second stage consists of lignite coal, often referred to as brown coal. Here the peat gets converted into lignite coal. It is considered to be the lowest rank of coal due to its relatively low heat content, meaning it has very less carbon content, that is 60 to 70 percent. And the reason is pretty simple, it has high amount of moisture and when exposed to air, it disintegrates. That's why this type of coal is not to be stored or hauled to a longer distance. The third stage consists of subbituminous coal. This is the upper layer of the main bituminous coal. It is also called black lignite. Generally, the color goes from dark brown to black coal. Its properties range from those of lignite to those of bituminous coal. This coal contains 35 to 45 percent of carbon and is widely used for generating steam power and industrial purposes. Subbituminous coal is not stable when exposed to air. It tends to disintegrate because it has similar conditions that of lignite and is believed to be formed at the same age. Now bituminous coal represents the fourth stage in coal formation. It has greater density than lignite or subbituminous coals and it has 60 to 80 percent of carbon content. And if you remember anything from class 11th chapter 2, The Origin of the Earth, in that we have read that as we go inside the earth from crust towards the core, the density of the materials increases. And that's how this coal has greater density than lignite or subbituminous coal. And this type of coal is also the most common coal that is found. The fifth and the final stage represents the anthracite coal. It is the best form of coal with a very low pollution and high calorific value, meaning produces a lot of heat. Anthracite is very pure and contains 75 to 95 percent carbon. It has a very high density and is very hard. This coal has a high submetallic luster, meaning it's kind of shiny. So this was all about the different types of coals that are available. Now I have two types of coal with me, which I believe one is subbituminous and the other is bituminous coal. Let's find out why I think so. The easy way to recognize this coal is by noticing its deep black color. It means it has to occur between lignite, which is brown in color, and anthracite, which is shiny black in color. So we have proven that these two are bituminous and subbituminous coal. Now the question is, which one is bituminous and subbituminous? Apart from the fact that we know as time passes, lignite increases in maturity by becoming darker and harder and is then classified as subbituminous coal. As this process of burial and alteration continues, more chemical and physical changes occur and the coal is then classified as bituminous. Clearly, my right hand coal is little heavier like a proper rock and the left one feels like a woody rock and little lighter. Moments back I've told you that as you go more and more inside the earth, the density of material increases. Therefore, on my right hand contains a bituminous coal because it's heavier and it has to settle downwards compared to the lighter one. So this one is bituminous and this one is subbituminous. Great. Now that we have made a clear distinction as to what is what, let's check out its physical characteristics. If you look at this subbituminous coal, try to see it horizontally. Bright and dull bands of coal material are visible. Can you see the bright and shiny side? Yeah. These are well preserved woody material. Remember I told you it's light and feels woody? These contain materials such as branches or stems and the dull side contains mineral material washed into the swamp, charcoal produced by fires or degraded plant materials. So basically this coal is the mature form of lignite coal. Most subbituminous coal is relatively young geologically, generally dating from the Mesozoic and Cenozoic eras. This coal is comparatively brittle meaning it can break easily and when it breaks, it breaks in cubical and conchoidal shape. 
On the other hand, bituminous coal is a little harder and heavier compared to subbituminous and you will not see any bright band. It's all dull black. But yet, if I remove a little chip of it, you'll be able to see the bright band. So it could be seen this way that with more pressure and heat, the subbituminous coal becomes a little more intact and goes on to form this piece. And this one is going to burn better than this one. Now after this stage comes the anthracite coal which is very hard and it has a lot of bright band all over it. Now I don't have a piece of anthracite. When I do, I'll make a video on it. Overall what I'm saying is you do understand the consistency of hardness of the coal as it goes from peat that is stage 1 to anthracite which is stage 5. In the end I thought of burning a small chunk of bituminous and subbituminous coal. It is said that both the coal burns easily with a smoky flame of yellow color. And what I've noticed is that subbituminous coal takes a while to heat up whereas bituminous heats up faster due to its high calorific value. Anyway, I think I enjoyed making this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. If you want to see more of such educational content, make sure you're subscribed. By doing so, you'll get an alert when my next video comes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.